welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you so much for leaving your houses and coming here or staying in your houses and coming here, whatever it is. Uh, my name is Philomena Jack. You are in the amazing Community Arts of Elmira. The reason we are here is because we want to put more art in our community and we want you to be part of it, okay? Yay. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, so uh, here we are, first slide. Beautiful, where we are, what maybe what got you here. Next slide. Excellent. Oh, let's go up a couple. Just and there. So who am I? Philomena. I've said this already. So I am an artist. Uh, I am. I have this podcast called Making It Up Podcast, which brings people in our community together to figure out how to get from A to B. I would love uh, if you would like to be on the podcast. Make contact. I would love to interview you. I'm also a certified professional development coach, which means, again, I help people get from A to B, and I use brain science to do that, and humor, and some uh, reading lists. I am a dog mom. If you follow me on any social media, you'll see I have a beautiful used dog, and uh, I will talk about her all day, so if you let me. I am a drawer of bunnies. This is my character, Bunsy D. Rabbit. He travels the world with me. We talk about um, mental health, art, and fun. And I'm a doer of many things, including making murals and trying to encourage other people to make murals. So next slide, please. Okay, so I always like to know why I'm doing something. Why make public art? The it, simple answer is why not? Why not make sanctioned public art, meaning having a space uh, that is sanctioned for actual art. Um, art is freedom, sort of. So again, I want to use the word sanctioned art. We want to build up our community one sanctioned mural at a time, one beautiful uh, street piece at a time. Um, so art is freedom in that you can express what it is you want to express. You can dream something and make it happen. One of the pieces that I have out on the street on second is uh, these bees and these flowers and they say to the passerby, be sweet, and be kind, because I really believe that when we just think about being a little bit more sweet to ourselves, then we can be a little bit more sweet to the people around us and then our community just gets better and better. Art is fun, mostly. So uh, most paintings that I do go through one or more awkward stages, sort of like an adolescence stage. And um, so sometimes that doesn't feel fun when you're looking at your piece and you're like, do I really know how to paint? Uh, the, the answer is yes, you do. Just keep moving. Just keep working on the piece. Don't abandon your paintings if you can. So art is fun, mostly, except for when sometimes it's not. And it's okay uh, to have those growing pains. Uh, art is work, and I think the best sort of work. It is work that gets you engaged with your heart and your body at the same time, your mind and your body at the same time. Um, I have had lots and lots of jobs in my past. I have worked in cubicles. I have worked in corporate America. I have worked in beautiful libraries, and that was very fun. But um, I think that to make art is the best kind of work. And uh, I want you to make art because I want you to be the hero or heroine that you are looking for. So don't look for Superman be Superman. Don't look for Wonder Woman, be Wonder Woman. And I believe we do that when we are making art, especially when we are making art that's out there in the community to enliven our communities. So next slide, please. So who should make art? You and you and you and you and you and you and you. And uh, your family should make art. Make it something that you all do together. I know uh, someone here in the room, I have a family who makes beautiful painted rocks and they look lovely in their garden and I think that's a wonderful way to communicate art with your family. Uh, you should be making art with your neighbors. 
talk to your neighbors about art. I am evangelical about everyone making art. And I think you should make art if you think that you can't make art. I often have students who come to my classes, either live or online, and say, oh my gosh, I can't even draw a stick figure. And my answer is, that's great. Most of my classes have no stick figures involved, right? I don't see any stick figure murals around our city yet, but maybe that's your thing. I mean, maybe you're really, really great at making stick figures. Um, so I'd really like us to look at this, people who think they can't. And in the next slide that we have, we're actually gonna pause from me talking and listen, watch an amazing video. So if we can go to the next slide. Uh, let's go to the next slide first. Okay, so uh, Tsushima Husani. She is a street artist. Um, she works all over the world. Now, this big paragraph here is from Wikipedia. You can go look at it yourself. I'm not gonna read that all to you, but we're gonna watch a video from her. Uh, she is specifically a person who might be told that she can't, but she does anyway. And she, to me, is a superhero, and I love her. And the things that she says about her community, I'd like you to think about that in relation to our community. I love living in Elmira. I love living in Elmira. I also see that there can be some challenges and struggles to living in Elmira. So if you think about the things that she says about her environment and community, and think about how that may relate to our environment and community. Um, I'd be interested to hear your thoughts later on today about that. So we're gonna watch a short video. Enjoy. Art is important in some country like Afghanistan because people need it. People get tired from words. Art is a kind of friendly way to fight with every kind of problem. Shamsia Hassani and I'm the female graffiti artist from Afghanistan. Also I'm lecturer at Kabul University Faculty of Fine Arts. At the beginning uh, I have started with working uh, on contemporary art and realistic style and slowly slowly uh, I wanted to make some bigger works December of 2010, a graffiti workshop organized by Cambridge Communication in Kabul. And they brought a teacher from the UK by name of Chu. After I started working on that workshop, that was very interesting for me. And I thought that would be much better if I can put my work in a street, like to use a wall as a canvas and using a spray paint. I can share my works with people, I can introduce art to people because most of people are not able to go to museums and galleries. Some people thinking that art is not allowed in Islam and then they feel that they should stop me and some of them are coming to use bad words to me. If a lot of closed mind come together, they will be very powerful and they will do anything. Normally, uh, when I start working, I will see what will happen to me, like I will see the people around. I'm trying to finish it very soon or just to leave it. Usually, if I want to paint over a very big building, I will never do that because I need a lot of time. That's why I have created a new series, I call it Dreaming Graffiti. I'm taking picture from every place that I like, any kind of building, 
and then I'm printing it out and after that uh, I'm painting over the pictures. This is one of my work from my Dreaming Graffiti series. Here I wrote Kabul in Delhi and this is in English and this is the woman with her guitar. There are a lot of elements that I could put as elements. I choose doing graffiti because I can share my ideas with people and I can bring women to society again. At the beginning, I have started women with the burqa, and the burqa was a symbol of a woman, but I have changed the shape with sharp shoulder and a stronger shape. I wanted to introduce a new woman to society. This character that I use in my work, this woman is doing education sometimes. This woman is alone in my work. This woman is facing with a lot of problems in my work, but she is still as strong. People will say that she is a woman and I'm a woman. So if she can do something, I can do something as well. People thought I'm doing the burqa to say I do not like the burqa. And I said no, the problem is not with the burqa. I think freedom is not to take off the burqa, it's to have peace. I mean, if you take off the burqa, but still you have a lot of problems, like you cannot do education, you have no equality, you cannot have decision. If she take off the burqa, nothing will change. My new series called um, Birds of No Nation, uh, because recently I see a lot of people, uh, like Afghani people or Iraq people, are trying to go to some other country like to Europe or to the US to have a better life and they thinking that there is a dreamland but they will see when they get there that it's not a dreamland everybody knows that the birds always are traveling and they have no specific nation so I feel that we as fun people they are feeling that they have no nation and they have no country because they are not feeling good in their own country A lot of educated people are leaving Afghanistan and I'm, I'm feeling very bad because those educated people could do something for this country and they left. So I don't want to leave, that's why. I can introduce a new Afghanistan to people with seminars, with exhibitions, with my artworks. Everybody has a very bad image of Afghanistan in their mind. So maybe I can change it a little bit. Maybe I can make it famous with art, not by war. Tori is in the room and another amazing artist in our community, so thank you. So Tori, how do you feel about the video? Yeah, you know, it, it really gets me. What are you thinking? Uh, I would like that you bring to life just how brave women are uh, in that part of the world. Right. I mean, this, this isn't a graffiti artist like uh, you know, somebody in the United States. Right. This is a woman putting it on the line. Right, totally. Like, Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Joe, I was really thinking about you during this too, about our creation economy and her talking about people leaving, mm -hmm. right? And we want to keep our educated, informed, growing people here. Yeah. Well, we have to start where we are. <laughs> right. Right. We know if we have a vision, we have the, the ideal uh, environment, and we have uh, kind of, can't we 
Right. Through conversation, and we say that place becomes a flower. Right. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. My my Shaw ladies, any thoughts? Um, the day that problem is going to have a name, right? That's right. <laughs> And I believe that's what uh, Elmira Infinite Canvas is embodying, that we're standing up and we're saying we are going to take these sanctioned areas and make them wonderful. Yes. Right. Yes. Your turn. Yeah, great, great, excellent, excellent. Okay, so go check her out. You know, this, is, this video is a few years old by now. I'm sad that it has so few views in terms of, you know, the number of views that YouTube could have. So I really want to spread her message and who knows, maybe someday we'll get her to visit us here in Elmira. Um, and so next we have our next slide. So if we go up one, yeah, so I would like just to break down some mindset stuff. So she embodied so well her um, working towards creating the world she wanted, right? And I believe how we do that every day, every decision is looking at what our mindset is. That when I was studying for my uh, coaching certification, one of the first lessons we learned, we had this cartoon, it was uh, two fish swimming in one direction and another fish swims by and says, hey, fish friends, how's the water today? And the two fish swimming along say like, what's water? Like they don't even know. So it's an idea about mindset that uh, when we recognize that we can grow the, the uh, thoughts in our head into a certain direction, um, that trickles down to the artwork that we're gonna make, that trickles down to us showing up. Like the fact that y'all showed up today, again, I give you so many applause for that because there are people who want to be here but feel that they're too shy for it or incapable or whatever, I don't know, fill in the blank. But uh, I want more of those people to come and be part of us. So I am just gonna do some quick mindset stuff if that's okay with everybody. Um, so we can go to the next. Um, so I want you to start thinking about your art here in Elmira and maybe throughout the world. Um, one of the reasons we're here today is to specifically talk about the walls here on the building that we're actually in. So we started experimenting with getting some art on the walls um, and the bigger vision is to eventually have this just plastered um, with community vision, community art. So that's one of the reasons you're here and I would love to get your mind starting to think about how that can happen. So we can go to the next slide. Um, this is a slide I call my win-win slide. There are some number of art pieces that I have either been involved in, have completed, or have been turned down for. So there are pieces on here that I did not get the gig, and that's okay. I call it win-win because regardless if I got the gig or not, if I won the commission, I still have this artwork in my portfolio and I can use it somewhere else. So for instance, this one here, I did not get that gig. But I've got my digital files, I've got my ideas, I've got my plans, I've got all the research I did uh, trying to get the gig. I still have that information for the next time I go out for a commission. So I call this win-win because these are still my art pieces. And some of these actually happened. And some of them might happen in the future, right? So when we're thinking about um, going out for any sort of gig, so if you apply to do a mural here in Elmira, 
your application isn't a guarantee that it's going to happen, right? But it is a guarantee that you worked on making some art which I guarantee is better for the world. Then you go to the next. Um, so truly, there's only one thing we can control. We can't control if our applications are going to get approved. We can't control that. But we can control how we think about it, right? If the thing doesn't, if you don't get approved, big deal, keep applying, keep applying, because maybe it'll fit into the next season or the next season or the next project. Um, I'd also like you to contemplate the words that you use. There's this theory that um, if you say something, you've thought it at least three times. So if I say, my left foot is too big, that means that I've been carrying around that thought for a long time. And is it serving me? Nope. I could just say, I have a left foot. <laughs> um, so I really want you to contemplate the words that you're using. Next slide, please. Okay, I'm gonna run through this. This is something that's normally like a two hour discussion with my, my coaching clients, but um, we are all on this hamster wheel. We have thoughts that we can and cannot control. Thoughts are always going to lead you to having feelings. These feelings are always going to lead to some action, even if that action is inaction. If that action is, I'm gonna get off the couch and do a thing, or is that uh, action going to be, i going to sit here on this couch and avoid that thing? Our actions always lead to an outcome. So the outcome could be, well, I got off the couch and I uh, planted those flowers that I've been wanting to put in my yard. Or the, action, the outcome could be, uh, I avoided the thing I needed to do and now I'm late writing my paper or whatever negative thing that could have come from your inaction. This outcome is directly going to relate to the new thoughts that you're having. So if your new thought is, this garden looks awesome, that awesome thought is going to lead to an awesome feeling. That awesome feeling is gonna to lead to another awesome action. And around and around we go again. Again, I am truncating this, I am making this uh, much uh, smaller than the, the actual science behind this. And I'd like you to notice that there's a double-headed arrow. Sometimes this loop of thought, feeling, thought, feeling, thought, feeling happens so quickly that we don't even recognize it. But I'd like you to, just like the fish recognizing that it's in water, I'd like you just to contemplate that, please. Um, are there questions or comments or you may think this is just hogwash or this may be lighting you up? Uh, anything from the audience. Okay, we can go on to the next slide. And again, I realize this is, that was very quick. So I'd like you to remember that a tree planted today will potentially lead to a, a harvest in the future. So what I mean by that in the arts is you sketching every day, you writing music every day, you reading about art history, you reading about the artists in your community, that's all planting your artistic trees. We only can um, control our mindset about any of this or anything in the world, right? We can't, again, we can't control whether our applications get accepted or denied, but we can, we, sorry, we, I can, we can control how we think about it. Most importantly, remember that art is fun, but it's also work. It's art work. You know, I teach little kids uh, twice a week, pre-K through six, and sometimes I'll get a kid who's like, oh, my crayon arm is just in pain. I'm like, yeah, it's artwork, dude. Like, keep coloring. Uh, <laughs> so keep coloring. Uh, can we have the next? Um, so how do you get involved? You reach out, you showed up today. Uh, we became friends on Facebag, and now here we are in 3D. That's amazing. Um, you could email me. I will send these slides to anybody who wants them. Um, Info at Community Arts of Elmira. That's where all of this is, is stemming from. I am just being a voice for them today, but this is all coming from Community Arts of Elmira and Elmira Infinite Canvas. Please keep showing people your bad artwork. Please keep showing people the artwork that you don't like. And when they say they like it, don't turn them down. Say thank you. Two words, thank you. Um, 
please drop any comparison black holes that you may have fallen into. If you're seeing artwork around the city and you're like, I could never, drop that comparison black hole. I was in that comparison black hole for a long time and sometimes I still have to get myself out of that. That's okay. Um, I want you to be involved and know that we are here for you. We are here to help mentor one another. Like I am so inspired, Tori, by your amazing skills, being able to render a human that looks like a human girl. That, that gets me right in the art space. Um, and the next one. Um, thank you. We really appreciate you being here. We're gonna walk around the, the, um, the building in a little while. Um, there are, where you can find me, all of my shameless plugs are right here. Uh, <laughs> and so for those of you in the room or if you're watching from somewhere else, I've left you little slips of paper. If you would like, I am offering as a gift for you to come from coming here, one, a, a, a fabulous art pin, but two, those little yellow slips of paper. If you wanna put your email address on there, I'm offering each and every one of you a free coaching session, no strings attached, there's no sales. You cannot buy my services after that talk. Like that, it's not an option. Um, it's just a free, we will chat about mindset or relationships or entrepreneurial stuff. So I thank you. That is all I have to say for us. I think this is the last slide, I think. Yeah, yeah and we're back at the beginning. So thank you. We're gonna go outside. Welcome back to Community Arts of El We are looking at a couple of walls that we will eventually uh, be painting. Uh, members of our community will be able to apply to paint a section of the wall. I had an idea of maybe us, uh, you know, we have a big frame and your artwork goes in the middle, you paint it and it looks like it's hanging. Wouldn't that be cool? That's awesome. And then another idea I had was, uh, I've been taking hula hoop classes and I was thinking if you could take that big circle, it's like these bubbles that are coming up the, the building and yeah. it could be your artwork in mm -hmm. a bubble. Like, I just think that would be super cool. And again, how cool it would be to have just our vision for what we want for our community here up on the wall. So it could be uh, roller paint, it could be spray paint, it could be using brushes. The one that I did over here, uh, I was experimenting. I wanted to see if I could create a watercolor effect. I got a um, from the store. And the background splatters that you see are me watering down the paint a little bit and then taking mops and whacking it <laughs> on the walls. And then it's so fun, messy and fun. And then the flower itself, it's a Cosmo, my favorite flower. Um, so I call it the first Cosmo. It's my first time using spray paint on somebody else's building. Uh, so, but can we just imagine like all the stuff that could be going on here? So we need to just let Lynn and Joe and Community Arts of Elmira know what our vision is. There will be eventually be a call for uh, to come through. And just so you can take a look like in a 360 view of what's going on. Um, so here we have this, sh this shed here that has art on all these different sides. That's by Brad. Um, he's one of his murals on this wall here, this blue, red, and white. And you've noticed it has a 607 is hidden in the mural, which I just think is so cool. On the opposite side of that is a community mural. And it's one of the first murals I actually worked on here at Community Al Al Arts of Elmira. I was asked to paint the hand to and the artists in the audience, you know, okay, I'm going to paint a hand. Other people are going to see it. Like that really made me have some anxiety, but I'm so glad I did it because now I drive by that every time. I'm like, that's right. I did that hand. That's amazing. Um, the box I was talking about earlier, the Be Sweet box, we could see right from here. And then behind us, there's mural um, of one of our local historic, historic figures. So this, if we just stand here and do a 360 turn, it's already turning into such an amazing vibe and space. And we can use that. And we want your ideas. Send it to info at Community Arts of Elmira. Thank you.